What would a world look like without soft skills? Well, I got a glimpse of it this morning. There are a group of teenagers sitting at a bus stop, staring at their phones and texting each other. Can they just put their phones down and talk to each other? But that's where we are. Conversation has become a lost art. In fact, poor soft skills are becoming an epidemic. I think to myself and wonder, will my kids have the skills to have relationships, build friendships, let alone lead others? I don't know. But what I do know is this trend needs to stop. That's why I'm here today, to help save soft skills from extinction. As I stand here in Hawaii, this is the first place where I learned about soft skills. Here, also known as aloha. Aloha means breath of life, a way of treating each other with love and respect. The irony here is, as I begin to talk about soft skills, something I feel very passionate about, I want you to know that Hawaiians are literally the poster child for them. So let's begin by defining what soft skills are. Soft skills are the ability to communicate and work well together. They're important to the human culture because they are the infrastructure that builds community. For example, in the corporate world, hard skills get all the headlines. But if you want to get promoted, you need strong soft skills. In his book, Emotional Intelligence at Work, Daniel Goleman states that 90% of what moves a person up the success ladder is emotional intelligence, or EQ. He also states that EQ is two times as important in distinguishing top performers from average ones, and four times as important in senior roles. This particular soft skill refers to the ability to manage your emotions with others. I'd like you to pause for a moment and think back to your favorite teacher, manager, or boss. Do you have someone in mind? Chances are they were hired for their hard skills, experience, job-related tasks, etc. But the reason why you remember them is for their soft skills. Soft skills are what we remember about a person. For example, when you feel listened to, you feel valued and supported. Strong soft skills make a person memorable. Soft skills are important because they pre provide context to written, visual, and spoken language. But as of late, we've really begun to shift away from what makes us human. As technology has evolved, it's created a soft skills gap. We live in a digital age where jobs can be automated and people can be obsolete. But the one thing that separates us from robots and machines are soft skills. Soft skills such as the ability to empathize with another's feelings are the differentiator that make us human. Let's take for instance the job search process. Most likely your resume is filled with hard skills, experience, job-related tasks, etc. That's what got you the interview. But what you'll get judged on during the interview is your soft skills. How you communicate, your body language, tone and inflection of voice. Without strong soft skills, your chances of landing the job decrease immensely. Technology has made communication more efficient, but it's also created a disconnect. Like in online dating, we readily trust a person's profile rather than actually getting to know them in person. We choose to communicate via text and email and risk miscommunication, even though 93% of communication is nonverbal. Or 
we find ourselves easily distracted, constantly checking our phone, rather than actually talking to the people that we're with. With a click of a button, we can buy, send, and update our status instantly, but we're not fully present. We're distracted. But let's get something straight here. Technology is not the enemy of soft skills. Convenience is. It's much more convenient to communicate virtually. In fact, it takes more effort, energy, and focus to talk to and listen to someone in real life than it does to respond to them online. But because we've chosen the easy way out, our soft skills have eroded because of it. So this raises the question, if we continue at this pace, will soft skills eventually become extinct? The answer is yes, but I do believe there's hope, especially in the following story. Did you know that less than a century ago, the Hawaiian language was almost lost? In fact, every two weeks, a language dies which equates to half of all the world's languages are in danger of becoming extinct within the next generation. Larry Kimura, a native of Hawaiian descent, noticed that the Hawaiian language was becoming an endangered species. At the time, there were only 50 known native speakers of Hawaiian. So Kimura made it his personal mission to save the Hawaiian language. He and a friend co-founded the Punana Leo preschools in the 1980s to teach Hawaiian culture. As of 2016, there were 2,000 students enrolled and 18,000 native Hawaiian speakers listed. That's amazing stuff. So Kimura, a University of Hawaii at Hilo professor, has definitely done his part to save the Hawaiian language from extinction. But we need to know that if we don't make a concerted effort, soft skills will disappear as we know it. In order to preserve soft skills, we need to know that at its core, it's about connection. Soft skills are kind of like relationships and that they take time to develop, to truly blossom. Relationships are foundational to any great accomplishment. And without strong soft skills, your personal impact is limited. But because soft skills take time to cultivate, to truly develop, unfortunately, we live in an instant gratification society. We don't want everything now. But not here in Hawaii. There's no rush. Here, people are present. They're not distracted. For example, have you ever noticed how relaxed people drive here on the highways? As someone who was born and raised in Los Angeles, if I drive 50 miles per hour on the 405, I will get honked at, yelled at, and cut off in a matter of seconds. Learning soft skills requires patience and repetition. I'm learning this as a parent. As a father, my goal is to give my kids the tools to effectively navigate the world, both socially and emotionally, by teaching and modeling to them soft skills, like putting their phone down during dinner time, making eye contact when talking to others, or initiating conversations by asking questions. So what can you do to save soft skills from extinction? Well, you can start by not assuming that soft skills are common sense. James Heckman, Nobel Prize winner and University of Chicago economist wanted to know what advantage does a high school student have over a GED graduate if they have similar test scores? So we researched the Perry Preschool Project. 
It started in the 1960s with 123 disadvantaged children put in a program five days a week for two hours over a period of two years, starting at the ages of three and four. What he found was this. By teaching character, conscientiousness, grit, and delayed gratification, it resulted in higher annual income, better health, and less crimes attempted. He also found that investing in early education development with an emphasis on communication, boosted soft skills, and influenced IQ in all participants. In fact, this program was so successful that the effects of it are still being felt through generations, nearly 50 years later. So our job is to make sure that we teach and model soft skills to the next generation of coworkers, peers, and children. We can do this by being proactive, volunteering as a leader, being adaptable, and problem solving in our local community. We can also develop our soft skills by learning how to actively listen, being aware of our body language, and uplifting teammates with a positive attitude. We actually need to take the example of Hawaiians and spread aloha to each other. So my challenge for you is this. Invest in people by learning how to actively listen and communicate more effectively. That's how you and I can help save soft skills from extinction. Mahalo for your time and for sharing the Aloha spirit with me. Thank you.